Hi, my name's Jackie Smithson. Um, I'm a felt artist and I'm going to today show you how to make a felt carrot, which sounds a bit strange, but um, during lockdown I've been selling Dig for Fig Tree kits which have various colours of wool, um, equipment that you need and instructions to make your own little vegetable. Um, larger version here, um, you wouldn't make any this big with the kit, probably about half the size. Um, but this just shows you a print from an original carrot felt piece that I've done in the past. So I'm going to quickly show you how to make that from scratch. Um, you use white merino wool to start with for your base, um, which I'm going to lay very thinly onto the mat. Using a mat like this because it's got ribs and it helps you to rub and roll the felt when you start doing that felting process. So very thinly, we take a piece of the wool. It's a little bit windy out here, but we'll travel out. And as you can see, very, very thinly, lay your layers down. I don't know if you can see from this, but the fibres, well you won't see that, but the fibres run at a certain length, which is about the length of your hand. So you need to hold the wall quite far down so that you can pull very gently away. Keep it very thin. Your parents may have said to you when you were little, wear lots of layers in the cold weather. This is what we do when we're felting. We do lots and lots of very thin layers and it's a much more effective way of felting. So one layer down, I'm going to go one layer across, a bit like a weave. So it's a warp and a weft. Something I learned recently, which I probably should have known years ago, but warp is the downward spit and weft is the cross, so weft for left. So I'm making a nice white base. We use white, um, generally because you're going to cover it over anyway with all your different colours. So I've done two layers down and then one final just to give a really nice base to start working on. It's a bit like painting, you'd have a blank canvas. This is your canvas before you start doing the next section of the felt piece. Okay, so that's that little section done. You see that? So if you've got any little holes anywhere, this is the time where you just tuck them in. You can pop a little bit over there if you think there's a bit of a gap. It just helps when you start to felt the wall, if it's all nice and neat and tidy. But equally, don't be too neat and tidy because it is a little bit of an organic thing to do. Okay. So the next stage, once we've done the white background, is to do another colour on the top. So as you can see from this one, I've used a nice bright blue, which is a lovely contrast to the orange. So I've got different coloured blues. You can mix these in your hands. Um, I use what they call carders. People think they look a bit like dog brushes. <laughs> They're very nice for mixing the colours. Um, so you can put three or four different blues, just a small amount, and then pull them apart. And as you can see, a little bit like paint when you're mixing your paint. Obviously you haven't got water but you can just mix them so you get a really nice sort of pastel -y idea of the colours and then just start to place them on there. You can play at this stage, you don't need to do the lines because you don't want a liney effect, you want a really nice mix. If you don't have carders, you can just mix the colours in your hands. It's just quite nice to have a few different shades. You can see there, just as easy. I mean, really go for it. Give them a good pull. You can almost throw them on and see what happens. Sometimes the happy accidents work really nicely. If you don't want to mix, just add 
되겠어요. So that's the end of the background. You can see that I've done. I don't like it to be too flat in colour. I like to have a bit of a mix. But equally, you don't want too much going on in your background. You want to keep your, your piece, as in your carrot, quite strong in the foreground. So the next bit, once you've done that, if you're tidy, you can tidy your blues away. If you feel that way inclined. <laughs> So you've got different oranges, yellows and reds. And again, I would just do a little bit of a mix with the carders. Just to get some nice different shades. So what you can do then, just to get the colour, uh, sorry, the shape of the carrot, you can shape it on the piece or you can shape it off here and then add it on. I quite like shaping it on there because it gives me an idea of how much how the size is going to be. The beauty of felting, if you think, oh, that's just totally wrong, you can lift it off. So again, like we did in the first place with the white, Lots of very thin layers, you don't want to put a big clump on the top. So just keep adding and adding. Probably just do one carrot today just to show you the process. The bright orange that I have here is a slightly different um, wool. This is a merino wool and this is called Woolen Bats. And it's just got a little bit of a different texture to it, it's a little bit coarser, but it's really nice just to give a texture in the, in the end, different texture to your, is this looking like a carrot? <laughs> idea of the greenery. I mean don't be too precious about this if you're doing your own felt it's really lovely sometimes just to leave it quite organic and you already get the, the idea that that might be you know leaves and things sometimes just throwing it on there and seeing what happens is a really nice way of working. <laughs> what will happen when we start to wet this and felt it, it will, things will move around a little bit so if you've spent ages just tweaking and tweaking and then it moves if you, you feel that you might have wasted your time but equally if you've got lots of time then play that's the beauty of it just play so different shades of green I'm going to probably leave it there because what I normally do with my pieces, I put quite a lot of stitch in them just to define. So I'm going to finish the green there. If you want this to look a little bit like it's perhaps come out of the ground and it's a little bit organic, <laughs> just maybe add a little bit of dark because you'd have ridges across a carrot um, just to give that a little bit of depth of colour. Hopefully this makes sense. <laughs> when I've got these little bits here, just give you a little bit of... Ooh, see how they stick to your hands. So 
So we have our carrot in its fluffy state, as I always call it. And we're going to start the felting process now. So you will need a piece of mesh. Um, you can put a cloth over it. Um, it's just to keep that piece in place that you've worked so hard on. Once you start rubbing and rolling, if you've just got something over it, it just protects it a little bit. Um, all I've got in here is hot water and fairy liquid. Um, it can be soap flakes, um, it doesn't have to be fairy liquid, it can be eco, uh, e-cover I think it's called. Um, any kind of detergent with a bit of soap in it. Um, theory being that a little bit of soap in there just breaks down the air bubbles in the wall and just helps the felting process. So give it a really good squirt, don't be frightened, I know lots of people are. <laughs> You'll see it start to flatten straight away. If your water is very hot, um, do pop a pair of gloves on. I know they probably get in your way a little bit and you can't feel the wall, but if it's hot, obviously you just need those just to protect you. So press it down very gently. If you start rubbing quickly straight away, all your wool will go into all different directions and you'll lose your design. So press down with the flat of the hand. you've got that nice and flat. Just very gently. You can see the soap start to come through there. Give it gentle rubs. I always do a little C shape with my hand and just rub because if you do this, as I say, you'll, you'll displace the um, design that you've cut down. It's a little bit of a stubby carrot. <laughs> so you really want to see that soap coming through. Okay, once you've done that, you don't have to have a rolling pin this long. <laughs> it's just one I had to hand. Again, don't go crazy with the rolling, just very gently at first. You can see all the, the fibres starting to run there. A little bit like a acrylic painting or ink painting where you just see the, the colours start to run into each other. Once you've got that nice and flat, what I tend to do is just lift up, get rid of the gloves because they get in my way, lift the little bit of mesh and the felt and just make sure you've got it wet. You can see there there's little bits of dry, so what I would do is give that another little bit of a squirt. It doesn't matter how wet it becomes because it's going to all be rinsed out in the end. And then tweaking at the edges. It doesn't need to be rigid and straight. That's not how textiles should be as far as I'm concerned. I think they should be a little bit wobbly, a little bit organic looking. But just get rid of the little wispy bits. start to be a little bit more heavy handed with it and really get that soap coming through. If you don't think there is much soap coming through you can always squirt a little bit more on there. Woo! It flies away. If you think it's coming away a little bit you can lift your mesh. I can't see it. to go off like that. I mean, everyone likes it different. Um, sometimes it's nice to have wispy bits coming off, but it is just a little bit easier to felt if it's just all in one place. Okay, once you flatten that down, take the mat, the rolling pin and the mesh and your felt. Really nice and tight. And then just to save your back, just pull it towards you and just give it a really good roll. Okay, 
Take that out. So once you've rolled it, what you need to do, so that you don't elongate the picture in one way too much, you turn it 90 degrees, a bit like making pastry, roll it again. So keep the mat on the table and just turn the felt. That way you'll remember which way you're turning it. Give it another good roll. And then another turn. So lift them up, all together. So if you turn it 90 degrees each time, you'll remember. It's looking very organic there. <laughs> Just come out of the ground. So I would suggest you roll this between five and 10 minutes, depending how strong you are. Some people are very, very strong and it starts to felt very quickly because they've got good muscles. <laughs> Really good just to get the flat of the hand on there and really just pop your weight on it. And just don't forget to just lift up every now and again and stretch your back. <laughs> okay, once you've done that for between five and ten minutes, lift off your mesh. And you can see how that's lifting, so that's starting to felt now. That starts to lift. I must have good muscles today. <laughs> Okay, so once you've rolled for five, ten minutes or so, until you feel it's nicely stuck together, it's still floppy, um, you can pop it down and if you think anything's gone awry a little bit, you can give it a little tweak. Equally, you can leave it be and let the fibres just do their thing. It's quite nice when the fibres do have that sort of organic feel, so you don't want it to be too precise. Um, I'm going to leave that because I like how that's just moved away. It has there. Just give that a little tuck in. I don't want it to look too triangular. I sort of want it to look a bit organic. You definitely don't want your gloves on at this point because you can't get the, the feel. Okay, I'm going to leave that there. Sorry to tell you, there's a bit more rolling to do, <laughs> but not too much. Okay, so put your cloth back on and just continue to roll like you have been doing. You'll feel now how much drier it's become because it's all obviously gone into the towel there. Just keep rolling. Don't forget to turn it. But what you'll notice, you'll start to see now, is that it will start to stiffen up. Like I showed you before, if it starts to lift, stick to the mat like that, it's starting to felt. So I'll just do a couple more and then you can get rid of your rolling pin and just roll it within your mat. It's not a precise science, you don't have to count, you don't have to say I've got to do six rolls one way, six the other. You get the feel for it. See how that's lifting the jumper in the wash. Um, if you put it on a very hot setting it starts to shrink, that's what the felt is doing. You're shocking the fibres and you're making them shrink together and lock. So you can be a bit more heavy handed with it now. There's no glue involved, there's no scissors, it's 
will just muscle. See there how it's lifting now. That's really starting to felt now. Do one more, then the really fun bit. Which is what the kids love to do when we do these workshops in schools. It scares the adults, but the kids love it. You can give it a little one of these and bash it down, and that gives it a little shock. So when I say this to adults in workshops, they go, no, no. And the kids go, yay. <laughs> just gives it that little, you don't have to do that, it's just a bit fun. But you can see how much that shrinks it now. And just really helps the process. So I think we'll just do a little bit more rolling and then we're done. When this is done, when you've rolled it a little bit more and you feel it's really stiffened up, um, run it under the tap, give it a good rinse out. You need to rinse all the soap out. So if I were finished now, I'd roll that up, squeeze it under the tap, and then let, lay it flat and just let it dry. Pop it on your radio or on the towel or on the table. If you have cats, don't let your cats near it because they like scratching things out. <laughs> but that is pretty much your finished cat.